Man, it, yeah. Okay, for that, for the NGA on the um, charge for offense, is it intent to deliver, just possession of meth? What do we put on that? No. It was just like a baggie, but I didn't really care to field test it, to be honest with you. I mean, there's a baggie, but I wasn't going to mess with field testing it. I didn't really care that much. Hi, this is part two of this series. Make sure you watch our previous video, part one, to grasp the full gist of it. Let's jump in. Atkins troubles multiply. On the same day felony charges were slapped on Atkins after a traffic stop by Grayson for narcotics that were never found until this point, Kincaid Police Chief DJ Mathen announced he was running for county sheriff as an independent. His big pitch? He was going to crack down on drug crimes and clean up Christian County. I'm going straight after the source of illegal narcotics and targeting thieves who are robbing Christian County blind, Mathen said during an interview. Just a few weeks later on July 5th, Mathen stopped Brittany Myers, Atkins' girlfriend. According to Myers, she spotted Mathen eyeing her from his patrol car while she was picking up a friend from an apartment near the police station. When she backed up, he immediately followed her. Mathen claimed he pulled her over for not wearing a seatbelt and because of a noise complaint about her car's exhaust. However, Mathen later told records requests that there was no video footage of the stop. Myers agreed to let him search her car, thinking she had nothing to hide. He found a plastic baggie with cannabis flour. Meyer said the bag had previously contained THC crystals, a legal substance in Illinois. In his report, Mathen wrote that he pulled Myers over for the seatbelt violation and a noise complaint. During the search, he found a small baggie in the middle console with a green leafy substance and a white powder substance. He then cited Myers for the seatbelt and muffler issues, but claimed he later field tested the white powder and it tested positive for methamphetamine. Mathen arrested Myers at her mom's house and she spent the night in jail. The arrest, which was publicized on Facebook, cost her both of her jobs, one at a bar and another at her child's daycare. Throughout their interaction, Myers said Mathen kept asking if Atkins was selling drugs or if she could set up a sting. I kept telling him, no, I don't do that. I literally work in a daycare, she said. Months later, a lab test by Illinois State Police confirmed the substance was cannabis, not meth. The Christian County State's Attorney's Office dropped the charges against Myers. An invisible warrant. Even after Brittany Myers' case got tossed out, Kyle Atkins kept finding himself back in court. Fast forward to September 1, 2022, just five days before the trial was set to kick off. The then State's Attorney Wes Poggenpole filed a last-minute request for more time to prep. Turns out, Kincaid Chief of Police DJ Mathen had just stumbled upon a video interview related to the case that he didn't even know existed until August 31, 2022. Poggenpole, who had taken over the case from former state's attorney Michael Havera, who'd left for a new gig with the Illinois State's Attorney's Appellate Prosecutor's Special Prosecution Unit, noted that the video was never sent over by Sean Grayson, the officer who had left the Kincaid PD after the investigation. Poggenpole admitted he hadn't even looked at the video yet when he wrote the motion. The video finally landed in Atkins attorney Tiffany Sanger's hands the next day. Once Sanger got her hands on the video, she moved to toss out all the evidence, calling it illegally seized because Grayson had arrested Atkins without a warrant or any lawful reason. She also argued that the videos Grayson claimed showed Atkins selling drugs to informants were non-existent. She even doubted the warrant Grayson said was out for Atkins' arrest ever existed. Subpoenas were issued for both Grayson and Mathan to show up in court. On February 24, 2023, during a hearing to decide if the newly found video would affect the case, Judge Bradley Paisley scrutinized Grayson's actions. The debate was whether an officer could arrest someone by lying about a warrant's existence. Paisley, who used to be Christian County State's attorney before joining the bench in 2007, said, Telling someone they've got a warrant is a big deal. It's supposed to be a judge's call, not a cop's. Mick Ward argued that even without a warrant, Grayson's claims about alleged drug buys should have been enough to detain Atkins. Paisley asked both sides to submit briefs, focusing on whether lying could justify the initial arrest. If lying can't justify that initial seizure, then the motion has to be granted, he said. By the next hearing on April 21, 2023, a whopping 714 days after Atkins' arrest, McWard moved to drop all charges before Paisley could rule on the evidence suppression notion. 
I mean, it, yeah. Okay, for that, for the NGA on the um, charge for offense, is it intent to deliver or just possession of meth? What are we putting on that? No. It was just like a baggie, but I didn't really care to field test it, to be honest with you. I mean, there's a baggie, but I wasn't gonna mess with field testing it. I didn't really care that much. Grayson's continued hiring. Accountability went off the rails in this case, and experts are pointing fingers all around. When Grayson dialed up the chief of Kincaid for advice on what charges to file against Atkins, the chief, if it was really him on the other end, should have told him not to press charges without solid evidence. But taking the chief's advice, who, by the way, is the only supervisor in a department as small as Kincaid, Grayson slapped Atkins with a felony notice to appear, even though he knew there was no evidence against him. Then, when the Christian County State's Attorney's Office got wind of the video and other evidence problems, they should have at least written up a report detailing the issues with Atkins' case. But here's the kicker. Once Grayson left Christian County, the responsibility of the state's attorney was essentially over. Moran, a former Illinois State appellate defender, said, Brady and the other Supreme Court rulings don't make prosecutors share this info with new jurisdiction. And as far as Illinois law goes, there's nothing requiring this either. If Deputy Grayson moves to a new jurisdiction, she added, the new prosecutor should find out about his past misconduct and disclose it to the defendant. But in reality, new prosecutors might not dig into his past or ask him about it, meaning they might unknowingly break Brady rules by not disclosing info they didn't know about. And unless the defense digs up this info, they won't catch it either. This creates a huge gap in the Brady system and is a big obstacle to accountability and fairness, Moran said. Law enforcement had their own duty to report Grayson's untruthfulness to the Illinois Law Enforcement Training and Standards Board within seven days, which keeps an officer professional conduct database. But according to Attorney General Kwame Raoul, no agency reported Grayson until the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office finally did after Massey's demise. Former Sangamon County Sheriff Jack Campbell said no red flags showed up during his agency's background check of Grayson. When asked if he knew about any misconduct in Christian County, Campbell said he didn't. Despite this, Grayson had already moved on to the Verdon Police Department, Auburn Police Department, and Logan County Sheriff's Office by the time the video surfaced. Calls for new legislation from Massey's family and activists like Reverend Al Sharpton have led to a lot of talk, but not much action from Illinois leaders on reforming the Safety Act. Senate President Don Harmon has pointed to the existing systems that were in place when Grayson was hired in Sangamon County. Senate Republican floor leader Steve McClure has criticized the hurried passage of the Safety Act and called for a bipartisan investigation to increase transparency between departments. In an interview, Attorney General Raul admitted he hadn't read the Impact for Equity report on police decertification reforms, reforms backed by law enforcement groups but stalled in implementation. He noted that it might be unfair to blame the new system for Massey's demise and said any needed reforms would need to address documented state issues. We're going to keep seeing situations like Sonia Massey's until the rules are in place and properly enforced. The missed red flags in Grayson's background, like the issues in Kincaid and Logan County, should have been caught by both the state's safeguards and the final check, the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office investigation of Grayson. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.